Okay, so welcome to the uh, live trading webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Eighth Trader. Uh, and we've been hosting these in um, in Discord, uh, you know, between uh, the holidays here, uh, and uh, just trying some things out and you know seeing how how it goes, uh, so that uh, uh, you know we'll have others be doing this in the future and trying to get the the process down. Uh, and and want to build out our, our community here uh, for everybody. So and this is going to be a, a, a real big uh, driver. Uh, so you know, looking forward to uh, doing more and more here. We think it's a really good uh, platform for uh, uh, using using Discord as a good platform for uh, building the community here. So uh, yeah, let us know what your thoughts are on it, uh, how we can improve, etc. Uh, the um, uh, today we have J Trader. Uh, so those of you not familiar with our uh, book map education, uh, it's pretty uh, uh, a pretty robust program we have. We have an um, educational course uh, that's online. Uh, once you subscribe, you get access to that. Uh, and then we have the um, uh, daily uh, uh, live analysis webinars. Okay, they're forward looking. It's reading the current market and then giving insight to where price may move next. Whole idea is so you can learn, you can provide that or utilize that education from the course in the live market. Uh, and then we have these webinars here, like with J Trader and for Scott Pulsini on uh, tomorrow, a uh, futures trader and, and J Trader, a stocks trader. They'll go through their. Um, uh, precise setups uh, and trade management okay so you can learn exactly from other traders as well uh, not just overall uh, regarding the order flow so we really try to cover all the bases for you for your education all right that's the the goal here uh, all right so we got to go through some disclosures you guys know who jtrader in is he'll be in uh, soon so once he's in here um, then uh, i'll turn it right over to him uh, so uh, uh, it, it, you know, he's a, a, a mentor or educator as well. I'll be putting this into the chat for you guys. So if you want to reach out to JTrader, uh, he is, um, uh, uh, you know, ex expert trader here. I mean, uh, some really great, uh, he's been just knocking it out of the park for years now uh, uh, with a lot of his strategies in trading stocks. So uh, if you want to reach out to him, uh, you can. I got to go through the disclosures. So let's do this and then. Uh, for the first um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes here, I'll go through uh, futures, uh, and then we'll we'll jump into uh, or as soon as J Trader comes in here, we'll we'll turn it right over to him and jump into stocks. General disclosure: All Bookmap Limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only, and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading, realistic trading performances. So you should know what you're getting into here. This is not to copy the trader. That would be really asinine. Uh, instead, learn from the trader. Uh, this is part of the education, as I just outlined earlier, uh, so that you guys can uh, see some other methods of, of uh, reading order flow uh, and, uh, and how others use it. Right. See if this is something that uh, you can apply to your trading. That's the key here. The risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so you guys know what you're getting into, uh, and uh, that's really important, uh, how to manage your trades and, uh, uh, and and your money, uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you don't come in here with guns a-blazing and, and, and lose all your money. Uh, so, uh, uh, or guns a-blazing and make all sorts of money and... and <laughs> And lose it in the future, whatever. Uh, the uh, just know what you're getting involved into. All right, that's uh, the key here. So let's just jump into some of these um, uh, futures now, and and just kind of kind of review um, uh, some things that uh, we've been covering the last couple of days. So let's we'll start with a higher time frame, and uh, looking at the S and P E mini here. 
Uh, you know, we can see the last couple of days up here. I mean, this was just such a beautiful move, guys. I, I keep pounding on the table about this. It's just unique when we see these kinds of things. Um, uh, I will mention them uh, and, and broadcast them more. Uh, it was a week ago, over a week ago, last Monday, we saw this move into all these icebergs, and look what it led to. It's just incredible, right? This is a huge move. Uh, it was all due to the action we saw during that webinar. Uh, you guys have access to that webinar. It's on our YouTube channel. Uh, you guys asked about uh, recordings for the YouTube uh, uh, videos um, or these streams the last couple of days. I do have them. I don't have the link for you right now. Uh, I will do it, though, right after this webinar okay, and update those so that uh, you guys can uh, review them if you like. Um, all right, so here's the hour chart over here. This is the daily. Here's the hour chart. Uh, and you can see the nice, nice move uh, to the upside here. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, the last couple of days, uh, some chop in here, right? And this, it's to be expected uh, after such a strong, powerful move, uh, after we saw all of that absorption on the on the offer or on the bid and then all those icebergs. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're kind of slowing down here. And here's the 15-minute chart. Uh, and we're looking at uh, the slowdown here. Now, look, let's look at the market structure, though to get a kind of bigger picture uh, outlook on what's happening here. We always look for these little jags here uh, where there's a slowdown and then a, maybe a burst forward again, slowdown and a burst forward again. Here's another little slowdown. So these little areas in here, look where the pullbacks come to. Here, you know, we're not making this stuff up. It comes right to it, bounces around here. This was uh, yesterday's action, right? Uh, and then yesterday it finally did break. Uh, this bigger range here, and we were looking for that break to actually unfold. Uh, it finally did, uh, and where did it go? Okay, it came down into this little range here, uh, where there was a, another pullback, uh, and then a breakout. Uh, and it, it bounced around in here for a bit, and then uh, came back up and retested the highs here just recently, in the last hour. Uh, so, uh, uh, or this little swing high, I should say. Uh, so, you know, what are we looking at here? Well, not much. Uh, we're looking to see what's going on in the order flow. Uh, it's going to be pretty range bound. We can just look at the candles here, understand the price action. Uh, candles, you know, I, I just don't think they show very much. Uh, you're trying to read a period of aggregated data. Uh, and we, we do our best. Uh, what we're looking at here is buyers and sellers on both sides, right? That's why we have these wicks on both sides. Uh, you know, we can see that we moved up. We did trade up into where we found sellers earlier yesterday. This is where we pulled back. So again, market structure, understanding the higher time frame structure. So now, now let's go to book map and, and see what's going on. Uh, and we can see that we tested up here, rejected. We see sellers coming in right now. Uh, they're going to go for the point of control of this little uh, range here. They already are trading into it. And the, so let's let's see if they can maybe take it further and below this swing here at uh, 80 or 79 and then maybe down to 75 okay? or maybe even down lower to some of these lows from yesterday, 70. So that's kind of what we're looking at here in the range. Or are we going to bounce off of this point of control and then come back up to these highs and then maybe even break out and test all time highs? Okay? Some of the scenarios we're going through in the higher time frame first uh, and then um, uh, we can uh, then step into the lower time frame uh, and get a lot more insight uh, to what's going on. All right, so let's do that uh, and take a look at book map. Here's the selling we just saw. Okay, they're just below the uh, cash open here. Uh, and uh, yep, selling right into high liquidity here. We're just looking for that move into 79. Uh, they want to go lower. So 76, 75, that's the next stop here. Uh, and have no... Um, uh, reason to think otherwise. Okay, it's already there at 76. Let's see if you can go to 75. Uh, and what about a lower? Well, where's the liquidity? It's down here, 72. Looking for it to unfold. This is a strong move here. Okay, so we're already at the swing low down here. Now, this is important, right? We're going to get some covering down here, some profit taking. We might get some buyers down here. All right, it's to be expected below the swing here. So let's zoom in a little bit further, All right? You can see some of that profit taking here. Now, there's still really strong selling pressure in here, so it's just a bit of a pause. 
We'll see if we get maybe a retest back up to this 4780 here, but I, I would suspect we'd, we'd continue on down here uh, into this lower liquidity. We stay with the trend until we see something different. We're open to the other scenarios though in here. Okay, well, what, what might unfold here? All right, so yeah, a bit of a pullback, a little bit of uh, some profit taking. We'll see if may maybe we get buyers in here uh, and, uh, and, and they lift it on up uh, into where it broke down from here, uh, 78 and 79, and then also 80, and maybe we can get buyers back up above it. Above it, these are some of the scenarios we're just going through, uh, and we're just outlining, uh, you know, kind of what what these scenarios might be, uh, and then we're going to look to the order flow uh, to understand higher probability uh, 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 follow through within those scenarios. And right now, we're still looking for you know, sellers coming in, okay, until we see something different. A pullback like this was to be expected below the uh, the swing uh, for the for the uh, uh, low of the day here. All right, so I don't see anything yet. I don't see a lot of buying pressure coming in yet. Uh, and uh, we haven't even gone back up and, and tested some of these areas yet. In this case, right in the middle of it. So I really don't see anything yet. Um, it's still, you know, uh, looking for overall trend to continue, though, uh, to the downside into this higher liquidity here. Okay, so just uh, nothing, nothing more to say than that uh, at the moment. Okay, here come the sellers. Let's see them try to break this now. Okay, watch out in some of these areas here. I mean, we are looking for this. And we're looking for them to trade into it and, and through it. I think they can trade through it. Um, but uh, let, let's take a look here. But why I say watch out is I just don't see the commitment on the sell side yet. Uh, in this area, we just made a lower low here. But how did we make that lower low? Okay, Not, not a whole lot of commitment here. Now it's getting a little bit better. Now let's see them move it into and through this liquidity here. If they cannot, right, it means that there's likely, uh, uh, you know, uh, icebergs or buyers on the other side. I don't see any icebergs uh, buying yet. I, I do see some over here uh, buying, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, there's our move. Okay, so there's our 72 or 71 and a half and still going lower. We should go lower 70 here. There we go. There's 70. Okay, so now let's just take a look, a step back here and go through this analysis in here, okay, and how to hold on to some of these trades. This is really important. Uh, we saw the grinding move on, was it Monday? Yeah, the grinding move to all-time highs uh, on Monday, I believe, this Monday, uh, just the other day. And um, look at the icebergs in here right now. Wow, so some, some, uh, some, some uh, buying down here. Uh, some absorption by the uh, larger players. And anyway, what I'm trying to get get to the point here that's, that's really important uh, is in these grinding moves lower, or in these moves lower, uh, we do anticipate the pullback. Uh, I thought we'd actually get a little bit higher pullback, probably back to like 78, 79, and this liquidity up here. We didn't even get that. So you know, don't get shaken out of these trades. Go with the overall trend, uh, but don't give back as well. Once you start to see a buy, new buying coming in, like like we've covered, new buying, what that looks like, uh, and uh, you start to see it trade up into and through some of these areas, get out, right? Or consider uh, taking some of the profit um, uh, or, uh, you know, looking for a potential uh, for a, a you know a, a move higher D different scenarios here this scenario here clearly just said stay with the position uh, there was no reason to get out okay so let me know if you have any questions on that and hold on a minute here
J Trader should be coming in here, looking for him. There he is. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Joseph. All right, let me, uh, I think you have access, so you should be able to, uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen here. And uh, you should be able to share yours. Oh, okay, it looks like uh, yeah, we got another another minute here. A J Trader will be on. Good morning, Bruce. Can you hear me? Yes, there you are. Good morning, Joseph. How are you? Good morning, traders. Uh, very good. Thank you very much, buddy. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Just, uh, uh, you know, uh, always uh, between the holidays here, kind of odd, odd time. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, S&P went to all time highs just the other day and and uh, no no real economic events and stuff. So, I don't, you know, very curious mm -hmm. to see what you come up with with some of the stocks here. Yes, yes. So uh, let me screen share over here uh, my my monitor. Okay, Bruce, I put over here 60, um, I put over here, let me see, uh, 60 FPS. Is that okay or you prefer it, I do it 30 or 15? Uh, 15 is better from our, our testing. Okay, so now so it's fine. I think you unshare and then, oh, there you go. You got it, yep. Okay, so first of all, again, good morning. Um, I will explain over here few things that we had this morning on uh, uh, small caps and then big caps. I'm a big believer that uh, after New Year, we're going to have a very strong market. Uh, these days, we have lack of volatility and liquidity in the small cap land. Uh, today, for example, we had three main uh, movers, which was ISIG, YGMZ and Pixie in the small cap land. So, I'm going to explain you more than trading together with you because right now, really, I don't have place to show you. I basically didn't trade uh, the whole morning over here. I've been following only uh, the traders in the room. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to use Bookmap. This morning, we had YGMZ. Okay. So we made a plan, and I really invite you every single morning to go watch the live streaming uh, that we have on YouTube where I go over Bookmap. Just let anticipation of what the day can be the plan. But over here, uh, together with Bruce, we want to show you when Bookmap becomes useful. As you know, you need a, a, daily, uh, a daily chart. Make always your plan, okay? Take time to make your plan. Put your levels. If you see over here, GMZ, I will uh, make this bigger. We have a stock that never had traded volume in the past, in the recent past. Look at this over here, so this is July. We had only one push over here with around 2.5 million volume on the hourly candle. And it simply faded all the way down. So we have a strong bearish. You can see over here on the hourly chart, strong bearish, okay? This is the daily. We traded volume only back over here in December. So uh, more than, <clears throat> sorry, one year ago. And we have some big holders in a $20 area. So now this is what happened this morning and why uh, some of the members in the room got in to 65 to 60. So you can see that we have an uptrend. Okay, so uptrend is formed basically by a set of higher lows and higher highs. This seems so simple, but still we have a lot of traders that they don't know the fundamentals of how a trend is formed. So only when we start forming over here, lower highs and lower lows. So when we have a trend shift, then you can consider front side and back side of the move. 
You can also see the shift in terms of rising volume versus uh, declining volume. Okay, so this is just looking at the chart. But when I'm at this level over here, so when I'm at 270, 260, I want more than a normal confirmation. I do just, I just don't want to follow only the trend patterns. What I'm going to do? I'm going to rely on uh, order flow. So I want to see basically uh, where buyers and sellers, or sellers better, are stacked, are placed. So this is our YGMZ, okay? So the higher low scenario that I was just explaining before is basically this. We're making higher lows, higher lows until this top. As you can see over here, I don't know if this is an algo or this is just like spoofing order, but basically we have somebody that is moving from 230, 240, and 251, 250. This is the biggest order that we had over here in the first hour since seven o'clock. And you can see that uh, when we form a double top over here at 270, we start forming a 270 over here resistance. Okay, this is the first main heat map that is not being removed. At the same time, we have over here this order that over here cancels to move over here cancels to move it here. So it's uh, moving up, trying to hold the price, but at a certain point over here, it doesn't get even executed. It doesn't even get absorbed. It simply cancels. So this makes me think, or if somebody like really wants to spoof over here in order to uh, raise the price, or is it some kind of algo that is just like trying to hold the price up over here. And maybe they're doing this because they have some bag holding and they want to sell at higher prices okay so we can make our let's say estimate over here our forecast but we don't know that with certainty at a certain point though when it cancels we start forming what we said before the first set of lower highs and lower lows okay so it is basically this what you see and this is the back side of the move so when you start looking for trading short in this case you want to look for this. You want to look for these uh, buyers getting uh, canceling over here or just like really go going away from the tape. And then you can see the formation of lower highs and lower lows. And this seems like so difficult, but I can tell you, and I will really promise you that if you do like some practice, you can start recognizing this very, very good. The same scenario that you may find and you think you find only on small caps. No, you can find on futures, you can find on crypto, you can find on big caps as well. Okay, so it's just a little bit about patience, uh, finding your, uh, we say, your feel with recognizing this. And the one thing I always suggest is try to always uh, record your uh, screen and then uh, replay it. Okay, because you have to basically see these things, these things in real time. It's now so easy for me to tell you what happened over here, but when you are in that moment, your um, uh, decision has to be so fast, okay? And this comes, really comes. Once we have over here our uh, lower highs and lower lows scenario, this simply, 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 sorry, unwinds until over here 170. And our plan over here, if you followed us in streaming, was to look for a gap in crap and simply fader. Now, what I see over here, the main support at 180, where the price is going right now, 180. This is the main support. Pixie is one of those stocks that when you hear the PRs they put out, you will start to laugh and you think, really, why should I invest in this company? Okay. Why should I invest in this company when the daily chart of this company is this? So, uh, why small caps are good to trade? Because you have an edge. What is the edge? That more than 70% of these stocks in 2021 close red on the day. What means red on the day? They close below the open level. So they can get up, get up, sorry, up even 100%. But 70% of these will close below the open. So that gives an edge. And as it tells you, okay, let's try to find and recognize when we have to short. And let's look over here, traders, when it's instead front side because I need to long. Okay. I don't really think that 
traders out there know a lot of the difference between longing and shorting with a precise trading strategy. So look over here. I'm going to re review with you a few factors. So what you see over here on my daily chart are J lines. I can explain this is a band with a 200 exponential moving average. And this is an exponential 7289. Why these numbers? Back in 2003 and 2004, I was trading only uh, European futures, FIB, uh, FDAX, and FTSC, so the FTSE. And I was trading uh, mainly um, cover warrants and uh, uh, Italian equities. So I was studying everything out there from you know the time we had RSI, Stochastic, MACD, uh, uh, Woody's, Pivots, uh, more basic stuff. And also I was studying the code of Fibonacci, you know, the retracement and the extensions. And I found those numbers to repeat over and over in certain scenarios. So if you see over here, what happened on this chart? Basically, we have that each time the, the stock goes near the J lines, so the first 7289 or the 200, we have the stock rejecting, correct? Now I will zoom in, otherwise we cannot really see the last part. So you can see over here, each time we go, in this case, near that 200, we are rejecting. So this morning, I, I was looking for these levels over here, uh, for the 175, and for a higher level over here at uh, $4. I will explain a few more things. So this is uh, a day where we traded 60 million volumes because I don't want to take a resistance where you have no volume. I want to look for that high, and I want to look for the close of the bar. I want to look over here for the high and the close of the bar. So what happens over here that this area is the area where we traded the main volume, which is this day over here, okay? This day over here. This each bar is a daily chart, okay? So I'm referring to this day over here and the second day, because these two days, we traded around 100 million volume. So now it doesn't mean that Pixie has that 100 million over here of resistance, but this means that 280 until 4 is a high volume resistance, okay? Another thing that you can add, so this is really how to make a professional plan before starting to trade, is looking at the volume profile. And this is what I do every single morning, what I teach, and what it works for me. So let's put volume profile, okay? So we can look at this. Uh, let me see if it's set up correctly. Okay, no. So this is how I like to have it, tick size. Uh, you can put time per profile chart is fine. I put expansion, no. And then over here, you will see a few things, okay? So this is what happens. The label over here in uh, red, it's called POC, okay? Point of control. So the same point of control you have in intraday when we trade on bookmap. This is the main level of volume traded, okay? So it means that the highest volume uh, area in this chart was traded over here exactly at 275. Remember this number, 275. These two zones over here, this one, this one, then this one, this one and this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five zones are called high volume nodes. Now I can tell you that this morning before the open, we didn't have this. We had only this one over here. So remember what we said before, the highest volume traded over here was between uh, uh, 280 and four, this area. And the highest volume with the volume profile that tells us this more in depth, is basically this area over here. So between 250 and 290 or $3, okay? So remember that this area, 275 is a big catalyst. Now I move to my pre-market and I start using bookmap. So this is when I basically get to conclusion. You have to be pretty fast because you don't have the whole morning to do this and this happens also very early. So if we want to trade the tops, sometimes we'll have tops around 4 or 5 a.m. E, sometimes it can be that 7, 8, or 9 a.m. This is not something we can predict. We just need to see what the market is offering each day. As you can see, 
the price over here gets to that 275. And what is 275? Remember, the high volume point of control or the POC. At the same time, do we see over here traders any kind of big heat map? No, nada. I see only a stock that is uptrending with higher lows and higher highs. Okay. At this area, 275. Remember, high volume point of control. The same time we have over here a uh, stall of the price, you can see on the chart. And we start forming, we start having over here, not forming, we start having a first high level of liquidity, which is a first level where sellers are stacked. They try to prop it again, you see over here, and again, we form a second resistance. So means that that point of control, the daily resistance levels, plus the high volume profile and over here the uh, heat map create a barrier. In this case, I can look to trade a short, for example, on a fill of the 90 May, like we see over here. This is a 90 May fill, just risking that 270. And I can start looking for the price to go all the way down because I have all this, uh, I would say, confirming my thesis. At the gate, so 9.30, Okay, let's suppose that uh, a lot of traders are in the West Coast, they cannot get up early and uh, whatever. So let's really start to look at our opening levels over here from around 8, 8.30, okay? So that would be around 5, 5.30 uh, East Coast. Sorry, New York time, New York time. Okay, look over here. This is 9.45. What happens over here, traders? First of all, let me put this over here. Okay. So price opens 9.30 over here and pushes into the 174, 173. Price opens and pushes into that area of 173, 174. This area is a wall of sellers area because we don't have only one heat map, but we have multiple in a very tight range. When you see this, remember that we have big players in because the orders are pretty sized, 55K, 44K, 30 uh, over here, we have another with 40K. Uh, I believe this is around 40K. So in this area over here, uh, 930, we have that huge amount of resistance, huge amount of resistance, okay? And you can see over here that we cannot break this level. And right away, we start unwinding. What are these? These are big sellers. So when you see these pink dots just below a resistance, means it's rejecting big sell-off. So this is really how to look for uh, levels where the price is rejecting. ISIG this morning is one of those stocks that I don't really suggest to trade short because it's a nano float. So the float of the stock is below 1 million. This already flow rotated more than 13 times from the open. Yes, they trade a huge amount of volume. As a matter of fact, yesterday the stock traders uh, had around 40 million, if I remember. Yeah, around 45, 44 million traders. So more than 45 times the float. And this morning we had a big run at the gate. I said not too short, huge volume, very strong. And I want to just show you the few, uh, we say, uh, the few ideal setups that we had over here. Look, once we we push, okay? So over here, we halt. The, the open is over here. We halt immediately, okay? Very strong push. Open is over here. Pops, dips into the halt level, forms over here a wedge, and then pops and fills. So all this area, once we fill over here the halt level, is basically uh, called bull trap, okay? Or heavy resistance, because over here we form a heavy resistance above. And the halt level, which is this red line over here, will act as an important resistance. 
Once we fail and you see that we start rejecting over here the health level plus the VWAP, then we can start looking for an easy trade for uh, the fader. And how to look at that spot? So that spot that you see over here that is rejecting the VWAP is this spot over here and this spot over here. You can see that we go above the heat map right away below into the heat map right away below. We start forming over here this uh, distribution pattern. Why distribution? Each bar has lower volume and also what has a lower high. And once we break over here the low, we have an increase of volume. So this is a distribution pattern. The same thing that we're forming over here, in this case, the distribution pattern, bear, uh, pattern, bear flag pattern. Okay, so this is what happened this morning in the small cap land. Um, as, a, as again, I do these things, these things every morning uh, in live, so I'm really looking to understand the price action, especially when we have stocks with dilution with an offering gone. For what concerns big caps, had no trades. Uh, I was looking at BABA fading a lot. I said Tesla below 1080, we can have a 1050 support, which is the uh, J line. But I was looking at this. So look at this apple. Some trader this morning hit me and told me, Jay, is this um, a good long? Is this a good short? So I'm going to put over here also book map. Okay. This is Apple. So basically, Apple is ranging in two bucks, three bucks. Okay. We don't really know this is the gate. We make our plan. Uh, we can decide to take the trade or not. But for me, the plan is essential. So look at this, traders. I basically like to swing Tesla. I like to swing Apple. I lost a lot on, on Facebook, really, because I basically had a high win rate. And on one trade, I on swing, I'm talking about, I basically went beyond my stop loss level. So let's say I was up like 400% uh, with Tesla, Apple, and Facebook and everything. Well, with the loss on Facebook, I went down to like 180, 190% left. And this is because I've been stubborn. So my point over here is no matter how good you think you are, the market is always better than you. And we need rules to protect yourself, okay? Uh, everybody does mistakes, recognize them and try to minimize them and not to do it again. So I could have been, you know, we always say like this, I could have been up like 1 million more on those expositions. But instead, with Facebook, I lost really more than half of what I did. Uh, this makes me understand that I need always, even if I have a lot of years of experience, I need always my hard stop loss and my risk uh, when I trade, especially if I trade also options together. The point is, when I saw this uptrend over here, I was looking over here for an anticipation of the, the short, and I traded against this level over here, against my guide, because I was the day looking more at the four hour, the one hour that it was fading. And then I didn't stop where I had to stop over here. I took a stop just over here. And basically, if I see this, I say, oh, that's not a short. Everything is green. Everything is still going up. The J line is about the 200. I'm so stupid. I can tell you that when you talk about big money and for a small account, big money can be even a 10K. For a big account, big money can be 1 million or more. Then your mind try always to find some excuse to confirm your wrong trade okay so instead be humble uh make a step back and uh recognize a stop and get out so look over here this is apple this is our trading range and we are forming like we said before higher lows higher highs the trend is definitely long okay so i learned my uh lesson again and again and again i'm not trading short over here Right now, I would think, oh, let's take short because we have the daily resistance. We're probably going to reject and we're maybe going down. Okay, I said already two things that go to not confirm my trade. I said probably and I said a maybe. Okay, so if I look at the one minute chart, one minute chart tells me exactly how is the pressure right today. It's basically lateral. If I look at the five minute chart, I can see it's lateral. So my point is, and remember this, if you study my strategy, you know that this is the 200 exponential moving average, okay? 
is what I call the institutional moving average. You can use a Tuanji MA, Tuanji SMA. Let's not debate on this. Everybody's different. I prefer the MA. It's a little bit more smoothed. Uh, we have the five minute Z lines, the three minute Z lines, the one minute Z lines. So if the one is above the three, is above the five, is above the 200, we have a strong bullish trend. When these start to get intertwined, like in this area, like in this area, and you can see that they're not like separate together, separate from each one, you know, see this? Then we have a lateral trend. So over here, you can see that they're separate. In this case, we have an uptrend. Over here, they are lateral, so it's basically or a consolidation and can be or distribution or accumulation, you know? Uh, consolidation can always be to uh, face uh, of the metal. Uh, distribution or accumulation. Distribution in case there's a top, accumulation in case this is just like an absorption, and then we move to higher prices. When I look at book map, my heads, uh, I would say, uh, becomes clear in the way I decide things. Because I need to know, am I looking this eventually for a short or I'm gonna look at this eventually for a long, okay? And I need to look at book map, not just at today. I need to look at book, book map every single day. So every single day for the next four or five days, I will take up book map, put Apple, and look always where we have the majority of buyers and sellers. So if today I'm looking at this chart, what do I see? And Bruce will uh, agree with me. He will say, Jay, between 182 and 180, uh, 181 and 182, we have the majority of red prints. So of red, sorry, of red volume, okay, of sellers. This area over here. And then the other main resistance is 185, 190. Tomorrow, or in four hours from now, tomorrow, in two days, I will again upload Apple put book map and start looking if these big areas of resistance, they were removed, they were executed, and or if they're still over there. If they're still over there, and I still look for, um, let's say, uh, a distribution pattern, I would like to see that these big areas of resistance, they start coming down. So basically it's like, like stair step down pattern. When we trade small caps, you start seeing this pattern intraday. So you start seeing really the big resistance coming down and tapering down, okay? So following over here, the, the price action. When I see big caps, this can happen in hours or even in days. And sometimes you will recognize the same amount of orders, okay? So now 182 over here is more than one big player. But if you put attention on this, you will see sometimes the same big order that is moving down and you will see them maybe after two days, three days. So this is a tip that I never read anywhere. Uh, when I when I uh, listen to almost every book map beat out there, so I'm giving it to you. Okay, start putting really on your paper. I have a sheet paper where I put this stuff. I want to trade Tesla tomorrow. Every single day, I will notice Tesla support resistance levels on order flow. Okay, when you trade, you have to be ahead of the game, and you cannot leave anything to you know the the fate over here. So Apple right now tells me we have the majority over here of distribution because they're having a huge amount of resistance above. So I'm looking more like a possible pullback, okay? Pullback would be confirmed if this level of resistance start to get to 180, 179, 178. So stair step down pattern. Uh, traders, I've been talking over here about 30 minutes of the, about this. Any question? Is it clear? You can write in advanced webinar if you have any question on this. Okay, buddy, thank you for being here. Okay. Anyways, if you have questions, just reach out, uh, right? Yeah, in and, and and Joseph, can can you hear me fine? Oh yes. Okay. Uh just um for those of you who are uh, new in here, um there's a cutoff limit on uh, the stream it's a max of 50 uh and basically uh, what we've done is uh i'm i'm also rebroadcasting uh joseph's screen so if you can't see his screen you could should be able to see mine and then see the same thing i'm seeing which is joseph's screen okay so uh that's why you see two live buttons there 
Um, so just to let you know, if you if you jump into this room, you can't get into J Traders uh, streaming. Watch mine; it's the same thing. Okay, okay. Uh, if Bruce, this was recorded, I think will be also some good um, uh, educational stuff, maybe to give to the members later on. But that's uh, you know, if it's uh, if it's recorded. Now, uh, when I'm looking at Apple. I'm staying with my thesis over here that this is distribution pattern, uh, but I need that, as I said, the uh, flow confirms and we have a stair step down path. The price is basically bouncing from that 178 and it's still in this trading range. So for me today, Apple is not to be traded until you start to see the stair step down pattern. If I'm looking instead at Baba, oh, this is fun. So this morning I was in the in the streaming and one member came up to me and said jay look at baba baba with Pitten is one of my best stock to trade short i love to short big caps and if you cannot short big caps there's no problem you can buy simply weekly or monthly options don't think options are hard to understand if i did you will do it better than me baba over here has two uh features one the spread on the uh, options is, is small, low premium. And the second thing is that Baba, when it washes, washes big. Remember, the market goes up in one, uh, I would say, uh, in one uh, minute and goes down in two minutes. So always one to two. It always sells off faster, twice faster than how it goes up. When I'm looking at Baba, I can see a downtrend, okay? How to use options over here on baba we'll cover this one second so j lines over here is faster is uh uh below the j lines slower okay so the 7029 is below the 200 to be simple each time you go to the 7029 or the 200 and you have a trend line break and break the 90 may that's your opportunity and your call over here to get the put right like call out to get a put option if i'm looking for a daily chart i'm not looking for a weekly option I'm more looking for a, a a monthly option sometimes i will get two thirds over here of the stock and of what's left this one third i will get one fourth of weekly options and uh, sometimes maybe even two fourth and the other two fourth monthly when this goes 100 percent win let's say it's a Tuesday, then I buy them, then I start adding over here position with this and this into the monthly options puts. And how do I calculate my targets? Okay, so let's say that the distance over here from over here, let's say the distance over here traders from uh, uh, this previous relative high, relative low to this previous relative high, okay? In this case, let's say it's around 30 bucks. Okay, then I will measure the same distance from here to the first drop. If over here I have over here a distance of let's say 40, um, almost 45 points, I will measure over here the distance 40, 45 points. So basically from this dip over here, sorry, 40, 45 points. So basically I wanna see that previous low breakdown for the same amount that we had the bounce off. And then I, could, I will continue to trail, for example, with lower highs, lower lows. So in that case, if I'm looking for, let's say, a target 140 and we're over here, I will look for 140 monthly puts. I can stay five, six, seven weeks out. Uh, the point over here is to look where is the target. If I'm thinking something will reach 280 and we are like a 210, I will start buying 260 to 70 to 80 calls, okay, monthly. Now, looking at this thing today, it made me laugh because this was the only A plus that this morning I had and I missed it. Basically, I'm taking some days off not to trade. And uh, we had this trend line break. This I traced it before we had the, uh, the open. So this is the daily chart. Uh, yesterday, we had already the breakdown and this is the hourly. Hourly makes you understand everything, okay? So we had the breakdown over here and then this morning, pop and fill. Pop and fill where? Below this important relative low. So looking at your one minute and then looking at book map, you can see right away the trend. So we pop at the gate. We start looking at this price action. 
and you can see that we go up and we have basically no resistance that I can see, okay? Maybe we can have some arc, which is not over here, uh, I would say, um, uh, placed, okay? Uh, which is not visible, but I don't care too much of that. I want to look for the price action. And then at the second moment, we start on the lower high over here, forming a big resistance of 10, around 10K. This resistance at the 113.80 is basically this level over here, okay? So we form a top and we form a lower high. The five minutes is above the three minutes, above the one minute, and below we have VWAP and 90 May. So we have everything for the bearish mode. Boom. Once we start having over here a fail, okay, of this level, 113 and 20, 113 and 30, which is basically the pre market low, this for me is done. My risk heat map, and then I can decide to trail this all the way down. Until they start making higher lows, I'm not really looking over here to trail the entire position. Uh, the main error that I see traders do, even in mentoring, is, oh, I see a support jam covering everything over here with really no reason. Support doesn't mean that will bounce. Support can be even somebody that is long, that it wants to get out over here on a stop loss, or maybe he's long down here like from previous days and he wants to get out, so it's still in order. Or maybe it's even like, <clears throat> sorry, even like somebody that maybe wants to buy the dip and start like to average down because he thinks that we'll have a bounce. So it doesn't mean that this is an important support. Oh, right away we'll have a bounce. Don't make that error. Wait how it reacts to their support level. Breaks and then becomes a resistance, rejects. So you have the confirmation of being a short. Okay. This is mainly what I believe that what I've seen that bookmap traders do. You see a support? Oh, that has to be a bounce. Absolutely. No. How many support do you see in the market? Okay. And this is also an error that I still do from time to time. Okay. Uh, now, Baba for me, if you get to the 115 and 60, 115 and 70, JLA rejection can be another short. <clears throat> Tesla. This is the uh, reason why I say that support does not really matter if you have then a breakdown and a rejection of that level. And matters is that when the support creates a dip and then we start having higher low supports like this over here. So this is how the price action moves. So relative high, relative high, relative high, relative high, okay? And each one is a lower high. At a certain point, this relative high is breezed by a higher low and a higher high. So in this case, we start reversing the scenario. And this is where you have your trend break. It can even be a small pullback to the J lines, okay? But basically, that is the shift in momentum that we have. Any question, traders? Uh, is it clear? Just a, a, a quick note uh, for for traders uh, new in here or people like myself um, when you click on j traders or my uh, streaming uh, screen uh, then if you want to reply like in the hashtag advanced dash webinar room for chat um, you, you know what you can do is you can uh, you click on the screen uh, the sharing or the uh, streaming screen uh, either mine or j traders lower right hand corner you pop out that window you can put that any place another monitor etc then you can go back into discord into the chat room uh, and uh, ask questions in there so just just to let you know about that yeah basically traders uh bruce is saying uh right over here advanced webinar if you have any question uh, what i mean is uh we can look some things together today being the market has been very slow and I think it can be a very good educational day, okay? All right, let's look again. Pixie if it's doing something over here. It's bouncing. This is fading still. COCP, nothing. ISIG, nothing. Baba. Okay, let's start looking at Baba. 
So we have a resistance at 111.68. You see over here that the bar is forming the first lower high. So this for me is right the first short that we can have. And at this point, I'm looking for this short, and this is the first target. I need to wait to see how it reacts with the 90 May. If it breaks the 90 May, I want to look for the lows. If it bounces from the 90 May, then I want to put the stop to the 111.68 or 111.70. So I'm looking at two things over here, price action to work in my direction, and also to see these sellers. And when I see these sellers, I want to see below the NBBO over here line to make lower highs and lower lows. You see that it's holding this micro support, 1154, is basically making a wedge or a pennant, actually more a pennant. And that's the trade, okay? So why this level to trade? Because this is called Jalen rejection. What do we have with the Jalen rejection? We have this double top into the heat map over here. Now, we need to break the slow, 111, uh, 111 and 50. 90 may connect the support. If this bounces from the support, then I move my stop break even. Okay, so the process is basically this. It's very easy. You look for the Jalen rejection. Okay, uh, when I say Jalen rejection, is basically this. Look yesterday. Okay, this is a Baba yesterday. Jalen rejection. JLN rejection. So this is a perfect example of JLN rejection breaking that 90 May. You can see, and it's fading until the previous low. So it's the first example that I explain you right now. The first thesis. The second one is that we get this JLN rejection. So this is the JLN, and we really get the top over here, right? But once we bounce from the 90 May, you take the stop in the money or break even. Then we have a second area over here. You see the price goes above and below the JLN. JLN's rejection fades until the previous low. Another JLN rejection over here fails, bounce small, comes, another JLN rejection comes all the way down. And what it's doing right now is basically bouncing from the 90 May. So if you go back to the BABA setup, you can see that we got to this low 111.50. And we're bouncing back up. So when I see something like this, I don't want to hold my position. I want to put my stop break even. In this case, this 111.63, 111.62. Let's wait now for now to see if we can stack a little bit more resistance above 11, uh, 111 and 70. And this construction can uh, become a wall of sellers. So this is the level and this is the level. You see over here, start bouncing. They remove liquidity. Some buyers over here breaking the previous high. This is the J-lines, right? So we're still not in a bullish mode. We're still strong bearish. It's just a pullback for now. You don't have to buy long over here. The red uh, zone you see over here, this red zone, this is the band that tells me that we have still a selling pressure. Okay, so still heavy selling pressure. So on the break of this level, I want to take short. If we have the 90 May, it goes above, that goes above over here, the Jalen's and fills back below, I want to take the short. uh yes david so uh let's look together over here can you explain again how to use your determiner okay it depends from the setup so when i'm looking for everything out there uh considering to have a 50 percent win rate which is a standard okay i want to have at least two hour return two hour return gives me a small i would say edge of uh, profit because you have to consider your expenses your fees, your commissions, whatever, even your time, even like, you know, whatever. Uh, so at least I want to R, okay? So necessary, when I calculate my risk reward, I've put, first of all, my stop loss. So let's say I'm taking this trade over here, okay? Because this bar is forming a lower high and I start seeing over here a heat map. So my trade will be in this area, exactly this point over here. So if I'm risking over here, in this case, 10 cents, 
at least I want my trade to work for 20 cents. This is based on numbers. So at one to R risk reward, okay, at least. If this would be 2.5 or three, it's better. I can tell you that I'm looking always for three R. When I have then the price not working my favor, so the price section over here reversing, I don't need to stay all the way to stop loss. I can take it and cut it. Something not working, cut it, okay? The other thing is, if I'm looking instead for a trade and the trade is working, then I always look for the previous support level. In this case, if you see this 1110, uh, 1111, um, sorry, 111 and 1120, I'm looking for this area over here. We have some support over here, some support over here, which is the previous low. If you break this previous low, and then I'm going to trail with each lower high and lower low, like this. Okay, hope that makes sense. But this is only for big caps J line rejection. Okay, then different scenarios, different trailing uh, style. So right now it's bouncing. So I'm not really looking here to take an uptrend short, but remember what happened yesterday. Yesterday made basically the same thing. Okay, we were over here. You can see that the price went above the J-lines. Okay, so at this point you think, oh wow, this is going up. I'm not looking too short. I'm better long over here, right? This is a beautiful breakout. No, look what it does. It starts to make a lower high over here on this bar over here, just the J-lines. 90 May is cutting down. Boom, you take your short and you take this beautiful unwind. And you don't really need more than this. This is one buck per share. Okay, so this is your profit. You're gonna trade short, you put stop over here like 20 cents, and at least you're gonna take over here at least average 3R. So 60 cents of return. Now let's get back to this one over here. Right now I'm still making higher lows and higher highs, you see, higher lows over here. So I'm not looking to short this until we make this higher lows and until the 90 May is below this, uh, is above, sorry, this J line over here. So what happened over here, they form support. So somebody trying to reverse over here, Baba, trying to bounce it. The previous relative uh, resistance, resistance, and then we have one more up here. So you see this big level over here, support. We have uh, this 1170. Still making higher low, still pushing. Of the VWAP. Remember, it's not that price above the VWAP, then we are bullish. Okay, we're still red on the day. We're still below the open level. It's only bouncing for now. So how it broke the pre-market high, sorry, how it broke the VWAP, we can have a fill the VWAP. So when I'm looking for these patterns, let's say I'm looking for it now to fade over here. I'm waiting, if it fades good, if it doesn't fade, I'm waiting. I'm looking for a trend line break and I'm looking ideally if these big support levels, they're gonna cancel, okay? So they're gonna uh, uh, simply cancel from the, from the uh, tape over here. Okay, creating a first resistance at uh, uh, 
Uh, okay, Sam over here is asking how I use volume dots. Yes. So uh, let me see if I can give you some example over here. I made some videos uh, even over here on Bookmap, especially a webinar that I remember where I explain how I use the dots. So go uh, watch it, buddy. Uh, but I'm going to explain you with one example what I mean. Strong for now, Baba. Okay, Judy. So, who is familiar with the um, with absorption? Anybody's familiar with that? Okay. Okay. So, look a few things over here. I'm going to show you four examples. Let me know if you can see over here this example on Bookmap. Um, uh, let me reduce over here the zoom. Okay. So this is not really to look too much about the, the price section, but really to look at the dots, especially, uh, when we have this fader. So the price is going up and we know this, the same example we had before on YGMZ or Pixie. At a certain point we have, you see the level of resistance over here, this red one. This means that we have in this moment sellers. And two times they try to break that uh, resistance where we have the 118, 18, sorry, dollar resistance. And this is called absorption. So the bigger dots in this case represent the higher volume versus the small dots over here. And for the fact they're trying to buy over here, we have the huge amount of buyers. They cannot break and that's absorption. We fade again, we fade more, we fade more, and then we create another level of this red resistance. You see, another heat map. They try again to buy, so they try over here to prop it. So they're really using some size on these ones. They cannot break, and again, starts to unwind. Soak over here, you see the big dot? Soak the support bounce from that. So it's basically like, not always, but these levels will create uh, reversals each time that you have them. Okay, this is just like one example that I like to show you over here on absorption or in this case, even reversals. Um, another example is for me looking instead at the way uh, you have a certain configuration with the volume dots. Okay, uh, look over here, traders. Exactly, trade. Exactly, 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 exactly. I like the imbalances as well. So look over here, traders, uh, this example over here. So you see that the price is going up, is going up, is going up. And you have sellers and buyers, more buyers, small sellers, more buyers, and, uh, small sellers, more buyers into a VWAP and into a level of heat map. That level of heat map is this J line over here. And you can see the spike to 650 also start looking always when you trade less than ten dollar stock at a half dollar number when you trade instead stocks of 50 plus dollars look at the whole round dollar numbers when you have the push into this level of resistance 650 you can see that we have the buyers that they basically exhaust they cannot push anymore and what happens next you have only sellers this means that bars are basically exhausted. They're not anymore present over here at the book, or if they are, they are simply very small. The fact that instantly, in few seconds, we have this fast wash means that the uh, amount of selling pressure is big. It means also that the buyers are very small versus the sellers. Until we get into this $6 level, which is our support, uh, I believe this was the, probably the previous day close, 
and also we had uh, another J lens over here. Okay. Uh, Joseph, if I can just butt in for a moment and I kind of nip this in the bud um, uh, before we, you, you go further with it. Um, the way that we have been describing or defining um, exhaustion and absorption uh, and just trying to be on the same page with everybody, that's all. Uh, that's why I'm bringing it up right now. Uh, is that uh, in this example here, it doesn't um, exhaustion is basically the lack of aggressor trading. So it has nothing to do with the heat map. Uh, the heat map would be would show more about absorption uh, at a level. Uh, but if there if like let's say like in that little example you're looking at right there, um, it's actually there's a little, another little retest there on the uh, on the buy side. Uh, a little kind of lower high there yeah right in there and then there's that you see the red line up above it that's just the best offer that's where it's exhausting out um exactly okay exactly. okay so the, uh, the the other spike to the upside though basically it looks like it kind of tagged into that uh, uh 650 um liquidity there and that would be more like absorption mm -hmm. yeah yeah over here we have some uh absorption and over here we have exhaustion yeah. exactly yeah yeah exactly so and then then you can kind of piece a couple of things together like it cannot even make an equal high and we don't even have buyers up there that often traders call divergence and you will see sometimes with even different amount of volume and the divergence to spot these levels over here to give you more confirmation yeah yeah so that just just the, the main point was uh it, you know i, I just want to nip these things in the bud and get everyone on the same page like uh uh in the in in webinars that's all exactly 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 so let's see over here are the questions okay is it clear these traders if you have some questions just reach out in the trading advanced webinar thank you david thank you sam okay if instead we will see the heat map being removed often i can tell this is very very often if you trade stocks nowadays you'll see more examples where the resistance is removed because basically big hands uh, go to hunt stop orders and then that is uh let's say over here we we are short sellers you're gonna stop out if you're long you're not gonna buy and then they will fake out the breakout just below you are long you will stop out if you're short you're not be short anymore because you already stopped out and what they will do the big hands will dump their size so they really go to hunt your levels uh often they create stuff moves okay stuff moves is a very fast breakout of a level and instantly uh um a fill of that level okay and that is together with absorption liquidation and in this case also exhaustion okay they work all together when the exhaustion of it when sorry the absorption over here is really finalize what they do they're gonna break above so it seems like okay absorption went away they're simply in control over here the longs but that's really what they want you to think instead what happens they pull the prog they pull the rug over here they basically give it that fake illusion that we all have a breakout right away they slam it below and over here what happened you won't see any more buyers because those buyers have been exhausted okay there guys yeah, we can be see beautiful every single example, day. Joseph. Uh, uh, especially, man, look at the selling pickup. Yeah, yeah, but we see often this in every, even this morning, uh, when we were looking at the market. Uh, let me find it over here if I can find it again. Was uh, ISIG? Okay, one you can see it over here. Okay, so they go really to stop that twenty-five. All right. And you can see, I'm going to put even the dots over here. You can see they go break the 25, right? So at a certain point over here, they're trying to absorb. 
but then they break out. So you think really this is gonna rock, this is gonna push 25, big hole around the number. What happens over here, they pull the rug, boom, right away they stuff in, they send it down like in, look, in five seconds they dump it. One buck almost of dump over here, and then they create this unwind. So that's the stuff. That's also over here, the absorption doesn't work, they push back up, they pull the rug, boom, lungs are exhaust. Why they're exhaust? Because you don't see anymore, these lungs have the power to push again to the previous high. That is. Okay, make sense guys and gals? All right. So at this point, I will say to follow ISIG, <laughs> because it's basically the one that have, is having a lot of liquidity. If you have to ask me, Jay, how would you trade this? You cannot trade this on a one or five minute chart for my experience. Uh, you have to look at this on a higher time frame. Start to look at, for example, at the daily or hourly and start looking at the patterns. So this is not a day one. This was day one. Then it came up, came down. This is forming like a dead cat bounce, okay? But it's a day two of a dead cat bounce. And what is the edge over here? For me, the edge today, there's no edge. We're still uptrending. We're still above the J lines. We're still above the previous day high. We're still above the previous day close. So, or we're going to have, for example, a fake out, a VWAP over here and stuff like we just explained. And then we're looking for a short. Otherwise, I'm looking for a day three gap down to short. When I'm looking to long this, only if this 90 may will be above the VWAP, and then I have a considerably good long high wind uh, rate setup. Otherwise, I'm not looking to trade. Okay, so three scenarios I'm looking for, or a stuff, sorry, I'm looking or for a stuff into this area of the VWAP, or if the 90 may breaks the VWAP and we start curling to the upside, or a day three gap down play. All other things tested, big tested with, with numbers. It's basically for me a higher risk. Okay. All right. So let's continue to watch this over here. So they created a micro support. Uh, actually, I prefer to use this over here like this. They created a micro support at. This 23 and 65. So 23 and 65. Yeah, around this level of here. Okay, this level of here, perfect. So we can do this. Okay, so this is the micro support. Micro support. Price over here is very tight. But something like this will fake out so many times. Okay, so I'm not really looking. To trade this for now, just showing you the examples. This was the halt level of before. This was the previous level of main resistance, 2530, 2550 area. And now the support 2365 and the last support we have around 23. Remember Joseph, Joseph what's, what's the um, uh, fundamentals behind behind this one? Because isn't it kind of odd to see like a couple days rise like this? Yes. So this, first of all, traders is up because yesterday they had a huge short squeeze, being this a nano float of less than 1 million. Uh, when you have a volume traders, yesterday was traded more than, was trading more than 45 million volumes. So more than 45 times the float means that I had always flow rotation. Basically, I believe one every 10, 15 minutes. It was crazy. Uh, if you look at ISIG, we know that it's a very small market cap, 42 million. 916K float, institutional ownership, 22%. Over here, we can read the news, but it's not really about the news traders. It's about really the short float that now I believe will be considerably high. Because a lot of shorts are still squeezed, especially with all the fake breakers that they gave uh, yesterday. And we have also over here, uh, let me see, okay, this one, a uh, very low, low cash. So if you look at this company, they have 3.65 million of cash, okay? So follow me with this. They have 900K of 
a net income negative and then they have a burn per month 724k so basically this over here they're probably gonna have i believe this is not even that real they probably have like cash for about three four months at the most and uh, i want to look if they have dilution okay so there's a long process over here you go for example in the last thank you you start looking if they have an s3 you start looking if they have an s1 you start looking if they have warrants or whatever you want we try to do this very fast Warrants nothing over here. Uh, let's see dilution. Let's see ATM. There's even a faster way. You simply go over here. I go on dilution tracker one second. ISIG. And we see that the company they claim they have seven months of cash and we have no dilution. So we have a potential traders uh short squeeze even today. Because this company still didn't file any kind of dilution. So it's not that they have a process of offering right now soon. Maybe today they will come up with something or even tomorrow. So when I see something like this, I don't have edge on my side, by my side. Therefore, I'm not looking to short it. Okay. The only ways I will look to trade this is if I have or the stuff over here, because it's a technical pattern that I can scalp it, or if I have a day three gap down. Okay. So those are the main three. The other setup, as I said, is if the 90 May, so this red one, goes above the VWAP and starts curling. That's a very strong pattern for me to look, especially, you can see over here yesterday, when the 90 May goes above the VWAP, you see this push goes from 20.40 up until over here 23s. So that's what I'm looking right now. Until then, I have to wait because I know they will trap fake breakdowns, uh fake breakouts over here fake absorptions then exhaustion and whatever they can do in order to trap retailers okay uh traders uh anybody following small caps over here if you have questions about dilution how they move just ask i'm just starting to wonder if maybe you're behind some of those short squeezes myself uh J joseph no buddy you and uh, you and the and the trading floor over there uh, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh traders no really start looking at really this manipulation and uh especially uh when uh you think sh shorts will be trapped those are the best form of manipulation that will uh, I would say end up with sh short squeezes okay what is the best form of manip manipulation sorry trapping traders below a breakdown so a break of support or below VWAP because everybody always think that VWAP crack is a VWAP short no it's not like that in this market micro float Fake uh, VWAP breakdowns are often fake breakdowns that they reclaim and they push it. All right. Yeah, I, just to be on record, I was joking, uh, Joseph. So, um, uh, so everyone knows that. Um, yeah, it's a very serious uh, allegation. So. Yes, I know, I know, I know. No, because there were traders in the past. No, I'm not making any names, but they were basically involved in. Uh, pumping the, the trades and I mean this is really like immoral so uh, let's uh, let's continue to trade traders and really learn these patterns because it's really how to you understand the market okay um, any question no I think uh, we've answered all the questions in here Joseph okay so uh, 1130 traders uh, oh maybe David over here saying something let's see First of all, let me know if you enjoyed this, if it was pretty clear, if you liked it, if you have any critic or things that you would like I cover next week. Uh, uh, David, just a quick question on absorption being in progress on Bob. So I can give you my read. Oh, you mean this over here? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, buddy. They have sword over here. And uh, I'm going to do one thing with you. Volume dots. Yes. 
so it's good even to put this visual over here of the dots. Bruce, do you ever use this? Uh, the uh, total volume, yeah. Yes, you find it useful. What do you think about it? Um, I um, yeah, I mean that's what we've had for years, uh, and then we switched over to the delta uh, dots, um, and the visualization is just so nice. Uh, and the delta dots that we've, I, I just stay with that ninety nine percent of the time. Okay, okay, okay. I usually uh, use volume delta, but from time to time I start looking at this. I like to see what happens inside. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's an absorption buddy. And uh, then they, they're, they're just like, push it over here. I want to look at Baba, what level is this? Oh, wow, near that 110 over here. We had the dip of 110.38 and then, okay, okay, okay. So you can see that we went above J lines and then we filled below J lines. Remember what we said before. If now we can crack and confirm below this 111.50, can go the, all the way down. Okay, uh, the reason why is because it's closing below the 90 May and because remember what I said before, don't think it's because we are above the view of this is an uptrend. No, all the market over here is, is screaming strong bearish. Okay. All right, Trader. So again, uh, give over here uh, a thank you to Bruce because he's organizing this very good. So I think he's a really good host. Uh, he deserves like uh, your, uh, your like. Okay. Uh, see you again next week. Thank you again, Bruce and Bookmap. And uh, God bless everybody. Use a stop loss always, okay? Don't do it like me on Facebook. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, you so much, much Joseph. Uh, these are so so um, uh, deeply appreciated. Um, uh, for a long time, uh, you've been doing just great work in here. Uh, so uh, happy new year, and uh, we'll see you uh, in 2022. Okay. Buon anno nuovo, amico mio. See you next year. Okay. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao.